What is going on guys? Uh, today we are going to change out one of these little bad boys. And uh, we're going to do in this Fleetwood here. And if you watch the channel a lot, you're probably thinking, how many Fleetwoods does this dude own? A lot. And I plan to get more. Yeah, this one here, uh, it's not going to be mine for much longer. You'll see it in a bunch of upcoming videos. So we're going to get to change this cluster out. It's a pretty easy job. Uh, they're pretty common known problems with these cars. Let me turn the key on here. So we got absolutely nothing. A lot of times some of the speedometer numbers will start going out or some of the odometer numbers or sometimes the fuel bars. Uh, this one here is completely out. So we're going to change it out and see if that fixes it. All right, so what we're going to start out doing, uh, we're going to pull the shifter all the way down. Probably should have the key on, otherwise it won't shift. Uh, probably should unhook the battery. I'm not going to. I'm going to just kick the key back when I'm done. But yeah, it wouldn't hurt if you got an e-brake to set it. I don't know if the e-brake works in this car, but we're about to find out, I guess. Totally works. So we're going to kill the ignition now. Yeah, this here, it just pulls out. Uh, just a bunch of little clips that are in it. You just pretty much grab it, you know, get it freed up and work its way out. Main thing I could say, right down here under the shifter, there's a little piece of rubber, you know, kind of filling that void. Um, there's a slit in the middle of it. Just kind of be careful when you're pulling that out because a lot of times there's little pins that hold that rubber on there and the pins will break off. So just be careful of that. All right, for this panel under the steering wheel. Uh, you can take it off without taking this cover here off. It's a lot easier to put it back on by taking this cover off. Uh, but I'll go ahead and show you this piece. There are three bolts right there, seven millimeter bolts. And one over here, right over there. And uh, you'll remove those and then pull this thing straight back. If you pull it down or you lift it like that, twist it, it'll break them clips. There's four of them right in there. It'll break them pretty much every time. So don't do that. Not to mention this thing is like barely glued to the metal bracket that's underneath. So be kind of careful with it. Um, if it comes off, you can't get epoxy and just glue it back on basically. These are a pretty high sought after thing also because a lot of cars, this falls off, people throw them away and you can't find them anymore. But if you want to remove this plastic cover, uh, it's not that bad. It's just a seven millimeter bolt there, seven millimeter bolt there. There is one in the center. Uh, this one's obviously been took apart before. There's one right here. Uh, these two tie together and this one goes in first. The driver's side goes in first. And then you got one more little screw back there, right there on the gas pedal. That's what keeps all this up and out of the way and out from behind the brake pedal and all that good stuff. So just remove all that and this will pull down. It's pretty simple. And like I said, it makes putting this on a lot easier. All right, so I had loosened it up just to make it a little bit easier. Basically, you can just grab right here and pull it to you. Do the same on the other side and work your way up and it will come out pretty easily. It's actually easier with two hands if you can believe that or not. Yeah, it just pops out. I'm gonna set you guys down. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out. That way I can not destroy it in the process. That little rubber piece is what gets you every time. It can be a bugger. There we go. There, there's what I was talking about. It actually kind of locks together. I just pushed it back and it come undone. Yeah, there's little tabs there that hold it in and they like to break. All right, so we're about to get to the hardest part of the whole job. Remembering that little cable there. That's your shift indicator. It hooks up on your steering column down there. Most of the time people forget about that when they pull these out and they break them or you forget about it when you put it back in done it numerous times so yeah yeah we're gonna pull that off um let me see how it hooks up might just get a little screwdriver you can see it might just get a little screwdriver and push it off uh i may have to remove this lower panel to put it back on i don't remember or not but we're about to find out now we got our little cable out of the way we have four seven millimeter bolts pretty much each corner uh, we're going to go ahead and pull those out. You might want to use a quarter inch drive on these because it's going to be a smaller ratchet. 
It's a little tight around its dash. I mean, you could totally push this dash up because it is like super durable. And I already know yours is cracked. If yours isn't, congratulations, you're like the 1%. I would remove that thing and sell it for like $1,000 and go buy a cracked one. Anyways, we're going to start pulling these out, and then we'll get our cluster pulled back a little bit and pull the wiring harness off of it. All right, so this cluster can be tricky. I'm saying that because I ripped half the dash apart because I was second-guessing myself. Yeah, I thought maybe you had to go in there to get the main harness. You don't. You don't. AC box is there, so you can't get to it anyways. Yeah, I played with it a little bit more and finally got the thing to come out. But basically, you just got to wiggle it a bunch and wiggle it. It's got a big plug up here. You kind of got to get that past everything. And then it will eventually come out. Just enough where you can get your wires. Just like so. Probably wouldn't hurt to drop the steering column just a little bit. But you should be able to get it without doing all that. Yeah. There's actually a lot of wiring harness in there. A lot more than I thought it was. up you all right with that being said we're gonna reach back here and unplug this all right maybe you can see there you go you can see that little plug back there we have to unplug that because that's what's keeping it in right now there's a wire and this plug here this plug right here it actually plugs into pretty much the dashboard itself so we're gonna reach back there find the plug Look at it. You just gotta squeeze it. Squeeze and pull. Now listen to the doorbell dinger. I can get my hand in there. I was squeezing the wrong way. The clip is up and down. I was squeezing left and right. Might be. Almost got it. There we go. Now you just tilt that forward. Pull it out. That easy. That actually really isn't too bad for being a speedometer cluster most of them are a nightmare so we'll set that up on top of the dash because the dash is already screwed anyways if your dash is in pristine condition don't ever do that don't set anything on it don't even look at it all right now we're gonna plug up our new one wouldn't be a bad time go ahead and check all your light bulbs if you want those to work uh, they just twist to the left and pull out pretty sure these ones work yeah i'm gonna remove this plug here this is the plug i was telling you about you just push it up, wiggle it out. It does come out, I promise. That's going to be easier in the car. And there you go. We're going to plug that up, put everything back together, and hopefully not forget our little cable. There we go. Plugging it up is a lot harder than I'm plugging it, believe it or not, because you're kind of going in blind. All right, now that we got that in, pretty much line up your holes. You line up the little rubber marks down here on the bottom, and then you just push it in, and it should go into that little plug. Just like that. So, now is the moment of truth. Will it work? Or did I just spend a whole bunch of time replacing this for nothing? Cool. It works. And the mileage on this cluster is actually pretty close to the car. Uh, the owner of this car said it was around 150, 160, somewhere around there give or take so you may actually come out ahead the mileage will stay with the cluster so if you got a high mileage cluster and a low mileage car you're gonna have high mileage on that car if you have a low mileage cluster and a high mileage car well you're gonna have low mileage congratulations yeah we're gonna start buttoning it up those are those little rubber pieces i was telling you about line that up and once you get that lined up you just push it straight in and it'll connect to that plug and last but not least a little selector there. I went ahead and pulled off this bottom cover. Uh, I had a bra I had a screw fall down in there. So I had to go ahead and pull it anyways. Which is a good thing because it makes it a lot easier to get to this. Plus that little uh, rubber grommet that goes right here. It'll be easier to put it back on. Alright, now make sure you put all your bolts back in. Or screws back in. Your four corners. And we're just about done. And before you stick this in, you might want to make sure all your little clips are there. These ones are pretty good about the clips staying on. Uh, some of the other ones are kind of a pain. But yeah, just check that out because otherwise it'll vibrate and rattle and drive you nuts. And these usually go in pretty simple. Uh, main thing, like, 
with the removal. Just kind of keep an eye on that there. That is the most delicate thing on this. One's in there where I want it, and two is in there where I want it. And there on that, just kind of wiggle it. It should fall into place. And there we go. We'll put our little piece together down here. I don't want to wrap your finger and use a screwdriver. There was a clothes pin in here that I used also. Uh, just push a little grommet to where it's all uniform and looks the same Because that part of the steering column does rotate So you want to try to have as least pressure on there as possible as a sweep And then we put our bottom piece together A little rubber piece There we go and a little rubber piece that just slides into each other and It's a, like a puzzle piece pretty simple to do as far as we're putting this lower piece back on uh, it has clips just like the speedometer cluster had. Got four of them right there and there. Check to make sure none of them got left behind. So that's how you change out the instrument cluster on a Fleetwood. Uh, really isn't that bad of a job. Hardest part for me was remembering how to do it. Uh, been a while since I've done it. So go ahead and hit the like button. Uh, subscribe. I work on a lot of Fleetwoods apparently. Uh, comment. Let me know if it helped you out. So we'll see you on the next one. <laughs> Good shot. We got away free. It lives to die another day.